Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. So you just intended to get back the $100,000 Mr. Elk owed you, correct? I've owned the guy the cash, so that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, I don't believe the $100,000 is what you were after. What are you getting at, trite? What else would a moneylender be after other than money? More money? Oh, he, the moneylender was after money, but money in a totally different league. The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch. What is that? A computer virus, your honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one of those do? A computer virus is a program that wreaks havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer? What does one of those do? <laughs> I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that's from the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, your honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. S several million dollars? Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would be normally bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glen Elk had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Glen Elk was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. Who liked to gamble. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elk put in it up in order to borrow the money. Somebody's as red as a tomato. You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get hold of that program? Yeah. Exactly. The witness may have poor fashion sense, but he is by no means an idiot, Trite. A man like him could get his hands on one million dollars without resorting to murder. Of course he could, provided that he had time. But what if he had needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. Tiger need money to the tune of one million dollars? Because of the medical He, he needs to repair a scooter! A code in a titanium, yo! <laughs> yeah, so he won't- he can beat the car. <laughs> <laughs> What's the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? It's evidence that Trite has no idea what he's doing. What? What do you mean? You're way off track, Trite. That evidence is irrelevant. Whoa, and by the way, that was a pun. Track, scooter. <laughs> Since when did he have the right to dish out penalties and puns? Are you alright, Nick? $100,000 wasn't enough for Mr. Tiger. He needed much more money than that, and in a hurry. Yeah, medical papers. In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. Where did you get all this info? We, you know! We had the papers! He didn't know she told us all about it, though. Oh, yeah. These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. Payment for these expenses was due in December of last year, and was paid in full. Uh, one million dollars?! A preposterous sum! Someone should sue those HMOs! Ha. No one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up dead as a morgue. But Mr. Tiger had no choice but to pay. Because his very life depended on it. Yeah. Now it's all coming together. O order! 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 You say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright? Indeed it did. Simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadaverini. Did you say Cadaverini? Bruto Cadaverini, mob boss in charge of all underworld activities in the city, and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini. Wait, how is he this well known of a mob boss? <laughs> Everybody knows he's Everybody the king knows of the him? under- Maybe it's like Al Capone. <laughs> <laughs> Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. But Al Capone, I'm pretty sure, was more well known as after his events, uh, not during. Probably. I don't think it was during, like, Hey, Al Capone, where are you going? Gonna oh, kill I'm somebody, gonna go kill somebody. Cool, see ya! <laughs> you 
were desperate to acquire the one million dollars the Cadaverini's demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glen Elg's life to pay your debt. On the day of the murder, Mr. Tiger's sole intention was to get his hands on this CD. Glen Elk had no way of paying back the $100,000, and Mr. Tiger knew it. But, then a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tiger would prefer to say never happened, but he can't, neither can I. The lottery win. Exactly! At the 11th hour, Mr. Elk won half a million dollars on the lottery. Which left Mr. Tiger with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. So he resorted to illegitimate means. How much money would it have been to get that poison, though? I don't know. If you know a chemist, it probably... You, True. You Underworld's just need... like, I need an underworld chemist. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. He murdered Glen Elg and then made his next move. To frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. Tiger posed as Glen Elg. While Viola Cadaverini played the role of Miss Bird. And they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, okay, Mr. Victor Kudo. This Kudo. is both ridiculous. They got ridiculously lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like, they really thought long and hard about what they were going to do. I've, my thing is, this all hinges on Maggie passing out. If she hadn't passed out, they could not have done any of this. Also, if if there was no other customer, if they're like, we're going to reenact it for the next customer that comes in, the Trabion is terrible. Yeah. Nobody goes there. They got lucky Mr. Kudo came in. Mm -hmm. the... Well, no, they probably talked. Here's the thing. They already had the chef under uh, debt and under wraps. They probably could have been like, tell me about this waitress. Tell me about um, who comes into your restaurant. And he'd be like, well, there's this old weirdo that comes in to get coffee at like two. Because okay. he comes in at a specific time, I'm pretty sure. And then Maggie, I don't know. It uh, does kind of depend on her fainting. Like I said, trite. That's crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef could have been kept out of it. Mm-hmm. But Mr. Armstrong knew all about it. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money, too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tiger's plan. Order, order! Silence or I'll clear the courtroom. <laughs> you's put on a good show, Spikey. Same to you. If you's want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. You saying I dressed up like that kid, created a witness, and framed someone? If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. Sloppy? I agree. What? Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright? Well, there's the chef. We haven't even mentioned that. Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, trite? What was this trick you say Mr. Tiger performed to frame the accused? Oh, um... I don't know trick bike trick. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, he tricked us out. <laughs> Does it really? <laughs> um, oh, we don't have the ear cream. Shoot. I was gonna nope, ask sorry. about that. Oh, I just realized it's, it's, um, him being a lawyer. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, what trick? And I was he like, made a lunchbox for her. <laughs> oh, that makes more sense. I can't believe no one... <gasps> He took two drinks in a row. And what's the relevance of that trite? Become sure um, it. It's uh just a little intro an intro into what? It seems all of this has been an elaborate trick on the part of the defense. Whoa! That was a lot! They no! A lot. Wait! Mr. Tiger did play a trick! A huge trick! <laughs> was it a wheelie on his scooter <laughs> trite? <laughs> no, it wasn't. There we go. What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish imitation. You Consider yourself insulted, your honor! <laughs> Mr. Tiger, 
You didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. A month ago, in this very court, you posed as me. What? That's... that's... the truth. But... The witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Yeah! Ryan! Yeah! <laughs> Although... Now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you, standing in here this very court a mere month ago. Why didn't you do The Phoenix Wright who put up the most disreputable, shabby defense I'd ever seen. <laughs> cool. Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man? Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? No. Oh. <laughs> hmm. You have records. Hey. Forget about it, yeah? I, I wouldn't do something like that. Not me. You, uh, <laughs> you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? <laughs> have you no pride, sir? Yeah. This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, trite, here in court we deal with people's lives. I thought he was gonna be like, it's a matter of wit! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Godot is right. Your Honor! Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge, with the vested power to hand down a verdict. A verdict. A verdict. Someone in my <laughs> position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support Especially it. Especially since his memory's no! bad. His memory's true. very bad. It's so, like... I mean, props to the judge for that. Yeah. If the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. No! Um, no! Arrest this boy! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> the circumstances surrounding Mr. Tiger are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But, but we've come so far! You say he impersonated Glen Elg. You say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. We added everything else up! You haven't a shred of evidence to prove that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee. Well, ah! well Gumshoe will come running in, it's fine. Ha! <laughs> and then immediately his hair becomes spiky. Sucks to be you right. Don't mess with the tiger or you're gonna get mauled, you hear that? You weren't the one who mauled us, it was the <laughs> prosecutor. All we managed to do here was chase him around for a bit. But I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Ha! <laughs> Looks like I won't be needing a refill. Eh, yeah, we'll be fine. If I just had one more piece of evidence. One more piece of evidence, and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. This witness's cross-examination is over. You are free to go, Mr. Tiger. No! No, he's not! No, he's not! He's Take committed so many crimes! Hold it. Your Honor, sir! Wait! Yeah, that's what I was- yeah. We De all knew. Detective! Detective Gumshoe! Sorry I took someone, pal. I- I- I sticked everything on this. My badge, the works. So here it is. My heart's counting on this too. Yeah. W what is it, detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece it's of evidence. evidence. What? What? <laughs> Meanwhile, Tiger's just like, well, you said I was free to go. <laughs> <laughs> Charters a jet. January 8th, two f How is that only an hour <laughs> in game? Well, he just said it was be an hour. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? About the prince, pal, from this medicine bottle! Oh! So, do you know who the prince belonged to now? Do you think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know! So, tell us! They're, they're the tigers, right? I knew it! <laughs> you bet! Clear as crystal all over the bottle. The Furio Tiger's paw prints, alright. That's great! We've got him now, Nick! What's wrong with you? You're hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoes got here. He laid everything on the line for this, Nick. I know. Look, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on this bottle right now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Mr. Elk's coffee. He's already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle... That really doesn't make any difference now. Maybe the ear medicine's poisonous if you eat it. But it wouldn't be potassium cyanide, and we know that's what poisoned that's him. True. I knew it. 
Great. No matter how hard I try, I'm never of any use. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. This was our last chance to help Maggie. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. Ah, uh, it's fine. It's alright, I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. Um... Oh, never mind. Other girl. I was thinking- I thought it would be Violetta. Like, Why?! <laughs> I thought it would be something like- well, This no. is the defendant slot. No, but I thought it would be something like, Oh, like, you got him this far. I want to be out of this business. I'll just tell you some w stuff. One day, I want to I want to go to the judges' chambers and like see if there's like a hot tub in there. <laughs> what? It's like the teacher's lounge. Oh, the, te the teacher's lounge doesn't have a hot tub, though. Do you know that? You I've never been, went I've to the been teacher's in the teacher's lounge. lounge. I went to oh. school, unlike you. I so, went to school too. <laughs> yeah, but you years. didn't. You didn't go to the teacher's lounge. No, I didn't. That's I why did. I thought there was a hot tub in there. I did because I was the terrible kid. But anyway, <laughs> detective comes you, <laughs> Maggie. You've been working on something for me. Sorry, I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it, and I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. I'll get out of your hair now. Detective Gumshoe, wait! He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. Well, we're back. Yep. Yeah. We'll figure Not something out. Not super helpful anyways. <laughs> Well, we had a really long break. Yeah, it's true. 20 minutes. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I granted you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Yep. Um, yes. Don't keep us all in suspense. Trite. Show us. Naturally, we can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. Okay. How much of more of my time are we use gonna waste? I ain't been to no court before, but you as a lawyer sure know why the bull fiend's out of proportion. That's true, that's their job. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really backed into a corner here. But maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present the final decisive piece of evidence to the court. Why does that not take out all of, all our, of meter? our meter? Clearly not the final. It's a scooter. I think it'd be hilarious if it's an attorney's badge. Like it's <laughs> Are our, real? like comparing the two. <laughs> Where it's like, this is his attorney's badge, this is mine. <laughs> See the difference? But that's, but, uh, that would be funny. Um, so what do you think we should present? Did we ever get the fingerprints on the actual potassium cyanide bottle? It has Maggie's prints on it. Well, okay. Um. Um. I like how they're still using the game one core music. Mm hmm. I mean, it's probably the bottle. <laughs> you know, I want to actually try what you just. Uh, did you want to present the paper badge or the attorney's badge? The attorney's badge. <laughs> we haven't done it yet. Quite frankly, Mr. Wright, I'm disappointed. I was wondering what evidence you could possibly produce that would sway me. I see the idiot's point. That's decisive. Real decisive. It's decisive in saying that I ain't guilty. Cool. Come on, Nick! Don't let gum shoot down! Well, I know I can't prove anything new. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> I pushed F4 instead. Uh, yeah. it's just the small one. This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's... Your Honor, naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tiger. What?! But, Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone in here knows what this bottle contains. Except one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. And that's him. My prints are on that pansy-looking bottle? Is that what you're saying? Well, what the hell's in it anyway? 
Potassium cyanide. <laughs> a phony trial, a phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. <laughs> Are we just gonna assume it's <laughs> potassium cyanide? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tiger, this is the decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... <laughs> we could say it. <laughs> Okay, it's... <laughs> well, I really want to say Mr. Armstrong's oils. <laughs> we got to. We got to. The evidence on its own isn't worth anything. I guess I'll just have to take the plunge and... Well, wait a minute, Nick. Our aromatherapy oil's not going to help anyone now, is it? She read my mind. Mr. Wright, if you think I'll allow you to indulge in speculation at this stage, you're wrong. Therapy. Oops, looks like I better reconsider. <laughs> I gotta take advantage of the fact that the tiger thinks he's won. And lead him into a trap. And a phony piece of evidence is the way to do it. This is not scrupulous. <laughs> As we all know, this bottle contains Glen Elk's bed- What are you doing, Nick? What did you just tell Mr. Gumshoe- Mr. Gumshoe? Gumshoe and I outside in the lobby a few minutes ago. You said the fact that his prints are on this bottle makes no difference now. Oh, yeah. Mr. Wright, stop stalling and present the dumb evidence already. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be great. This is the bottle containing the potassium cyanide. P potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. Elg, Your Honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tiger, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? I'm waiting for Godot to say something. <laughs> you make a good clown, you know that? True. What? You ain't never gonna get me this to stick. You was just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? A bluff? I can see straight through you, Phoenix, right? That ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. No, no. This is the bottle we found traces of the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna get ripped to shreds! The cyanide bottle was brown, and it was made of glass! That cheap piece of trash- Well, you know that! Don't look nothing like it! But you know that, and that's a problem. <laughs> the prosecutor's just like, what an idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Basically. That's great. This is great. Got him. At last. What? Why has everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle the cyanide was in. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. And don't let that cozy looking suit fool you people. That lawyer's just playing games. Tell him, Godot. Tell that guy where to go. You still haven't figured it out. Don't you realize what you just said? <laughs> w what I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Uh, uh. <laughs> but just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Uh, um, you, you don't know who you're messing with. I'm the tiger! I control millions of dollars on the black market! You just announced that to the courtroom! <laughs> you think I'm gonna let some jumped up suit get the better of me? Sure, the last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. I'm waiting for him to break down. <laughs> And everybody hides underneath their seats. <laughs> the psych lock broke it now. <laughs> Did he die? Did he pass out from what? What's with the eyes? W what's going on? Did he- It looks like a blackout. Did he yell so much that the lights burst? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> well done, trite. Uh... What? 
the, the magic of his hand brought the lights back. Lord said, let there be light. I Godot s- said, let there be light. Well, Go- Godot does have God in the title. <laughs> Godo. I saved my 17th cup of coffee just for you. What? Savor it. How'd you throw that in the dark? While you watch your caged prey. I love it when you silent scream and you're like... <sighs> it's like Fox <laughs> in the test of fear! Yeah. <laughs> Right? You caught a tiger by his toe, but if this one hollers, he won't be let go. The prosecution will be sure to take out care of Mr. Tiger, won't <sighs> you, Mr. Godot? Finally. He's being arrested on suspicion of the murder of Glen Elk, no, Your Honor. I think you mean proven murder <laughs> of the- <laughs> Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. And in the absence of genuine evidence. But the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Furio Tiger is truly a frightening criminal. Thank goodness he'll be in jail. The truly frightening one is that defense attorney over there. True. Godot. Well, I'm now in a position to deliver my verdict. Sweet. This court finds the defendant Maggie Bird. Gumshoe's like, yeah! Yeah! Throwing, like extra, throwing confetti. All extra confetti. That is all. This court is adjourned. I guarantee we're going to have to give her that lunchbox afterwards. <laughs> Why else would we get it? Yeah. <laughs> January 8th, 4, 10 p.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright, I... I... I'm at loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed at me in all that trouble a month ago. But now I feel like I can forgive him. Hey, that wasn't me, Maggie! That was the tiger! Look, Nick. In the doorway. Detective Gumshoe. Make your move, bro! Oh, uh, guess I'll be heading off then. See no! you later, pal! No! Come back! Wait! Detective Gumshoe. Uh-oh, yeah. Uh, congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony, then? Huh? Oh, well, I was... Well, guess I'll be heading off then. No! See you around. No! Wait up, detective. He just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. It's thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even any use! But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. And illegally. <laughs> yeah. Detective Gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you just put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should help Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Uh, Maggie? You know, Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you for all of this. I wanted to believe that, sir. But on the first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me. That's why he thought I might have done it. I've got to prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. A trophy on lunch! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh la la! <laughs> um, what's this? You made it! Huh? Oh, I thought it'd be a good present. You know, to celebrate your freedom. Oh, well, I don't really get it, but... Thanks. I'll treasure it always. Um, you, you might not want to keep it around. No. Actually, it's not real lobster, so it won't go it bad. It probably won't go bad. That didn't seem to do the trick. <laughs> well, I guess I'll be going now, then. No! Oh, oh that's the wrong <laughs> save state! <laughs> you know you want to go back and prove the tiger guilty all over again, right? <laughs> but... Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. Th- that's... A present from Detective Gumshoe, made with a lot ton of love. He said you lost weight and he was worried about you. D- Detective Gumshoe... He thinks I'm skinny? Yes! <laughs> no, he thinks I'm fat! <laughs> I... I actually really like weenies, you know. Maya, don't eat them again. Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. 
Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this now? Yeah, eat your weenies and rice. <laughs> She's crying while eating it. <laughs> so how is it, Maggie? It's, it's really good. She also has had quite a stressful day. That's Stress true. Stress eating, after all. So the case of phony versus genuine comes to an end. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. Please not with her! I don't want to keep voicing her! <laughs> <laughs> She's not that bad to voice, is she? No, but I can't give her a unique voice that I like. Episode 3, Recipe for Turnabout. The, the end. The end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Brand new What's episode next? has been added. It's... Turnabout Beginnings. What is, what is this? Oh, remember back in the day when I began my attorney <laughs> trial? And it's just case one, <laughs> one over again. <laughs> I'm trying to think. The, I, begin no, it's, the it, beginning of spring. It's like, uh, is it Casablanca that has, it's the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Or is that? Is that oh, a, maybe that is. I don't know. I Casablanca either has that or Casablanca, here's looking at you, kid. Or that's maybe Casablanca, both. for sure. Okay. No, because Casablanca, there's like the scene, it's like, five million hours and then it's like here's looking at you kid and then there's the plane and then there's the plane at the end they're like ah 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 and then they're like standing because remember when we go on the ride that sounds no, bad in the remember recording when we would go um <laughs> yeah it would remember when we would go like to disney and we'd go on that ride and they'd have the animatronics that's yeah, what i mean yeah. they just look really awkward because they're old and they're like moving yeah. awkwardly also Recipe for Turnabout has Maya in the outfit. <laughs> it looks very weird, though, on our screen. Yeah, it, it does. Because it's like, a lot of it's cut off. Anyhow, yeah. episode four, Turnabout Beginnings. That's going to happen next time on yeah. Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. That's, it's a very interesting case, I'll say that. Okay, I hope it's on a train. Okay, you heard it here first. Marty is voting for train. train mystery. No, because then Pearl could finally, like... Well, Pearl's already ridden the train at this point, but yeah. maybe Pearl will come back and it'll be maybe it'll be like that Paper Mario case. I hated that Paper I Mario case. I loved chapter. that one. <laughs> that was the, like, the like, worst. Who who ate the stew with the fat toad's like it wasn't me. <laughs> and then he ate that it. That wasn't the second worst world. Bogley Woods was worse. I loved that world. Bogley Woods sucked. But the, the train world, world was just train? hey backtrack a lot. No, it's not. You just walk through the. Train thing. a butt ton of times. Anyhow, it's we're not so here to complain right? about Paper Mario Chapter <sighs> 6. We're here to end the episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.